Assalamu alaikum. I am delighted today to have two people alongside me on season two of Progeny Podcast. Yes, we're back and I can't wait. My first special guest is Ahmed Gokul. Ahmed has been involved in the community from his early years. During university, he began lobbying in the United Nations and hosting Islamic TV shows and documentaries. He now runs a business with his family and continues youth work to serve the community. My second amazing guest is Muhammad Tahar. If you've ever flown out of Heathrow Airport, Muhammad has had an influence on your journey. As an aerospace engineering graduate working at the airport, he is part of the team that makes sure your journey through the airport is optimized and running smoothly. Having worked everywhere from the runway lights to the baggage system, he sees a side of the airport that not many of us get to see. As well as being an engineer at Heathrow, Muhammad gives motivational speeches at universities and schools to inspire a desire to grow and become more than who you currently are. Welcome both Ahmed and Muhammad. Thank, Thank you for you. joining me. Thank you very Thank much. You. I, I went to school with you. That's right. And I worked with you. Yeah. <laughs> I remember working with you, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It wasn't, it wasn't that, that was an experience. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't. But I don't remember you at school. I was hidden in the shadows, bro. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> literally... I always kept I kept the low profile, I think. So so how old are you if you don't mind me asking? Twenty four now. Twenty four. Oh no, that's so we're a similar old. age. You yeah. Are similar. yeah, I'm yeah. Old. You have to call me Ammo. That's how good old. luck getting that <laughs> <laughs> Um tell us about your school days. I mean back in Khoi, I went to I went to Khoi. Um, oh, but you didn't go Khoi. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean I I was I was always the shy kid in school to be honest. I was very insecure. I was I I was you know I used to bang out the grades I used to get I used to get good marks and stuff but I had zero confidence uh, but I always just try and put myself put myself outside my comfort zone so I used to actually do the adhan in Khoti back in my days. No way! You got yeah. a good voice. I used give, to. give us a give us a nah. quick snippet, bro. <laughs> I used to I used to bro I I tried to revisit it once it yeah. didn't, didn't sound as good as it used to be. <laughs> Everyone sounds good during Khoti. I think I did that adhan a few times as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, as a punishment or no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to do. I was Imam of the Salah as well. Like you said, Mashallah. 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 So, enough. so, so you did that what to try and fit in? Not really. Um, I kind of I did it because I was I was decent at it, and no one else wanted to put their hands up. I was the only one that was willing. You know, the thing is, you do it once, and then they're like, "Oh, he's all right." And every yeah. single time, it's like when it, Muhammad, when he's the go-to like, guy, Hamid, go to. So it became one of those things, bro. But. At that age, puberty, you know, your voice is starting to crack a little bit <laughs> and you're just there going, ah, and it's, it's not great. It's not great. So you, it's like you have to make yourself vulnerable in that position. It's not easy. Not many people are willing to make themselves vulnerable and put mm. themselves in front of everyone like that and be so willing I, to make their voice crack in front of everyone. So I think from probably an early age, you develop all sorts of skills. So even though you're maybe the shy one, but... Standing in front, I, I, I know we, we, Avan to us is kind of a routine. There's always got to be someone who does it. But I think we sometimes may underestimate how much courage it takes, especially when you're a young kid. So do you think that that period or maybe that kind of start starting point for you at Khoi, doing the Avan was maybe a, a sign of what's to come? In retrospect, absolutely. Mm. But at the time, I never saw it. At the time, I, I was, bro, I used to stand up there and there was a radiator in front of me. I remember this very clearly. I used to have to hold on to the radiator to stop the shaking. And I used to feel my knees shake sometimes. As no well way. Because I was that, like, nervous. Are you shaking now? No. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Stage fright goes. Yeah. For some people, I think. Yeah. But that's the thing. I remember, I remember the first times it was, my knee yeah. would just uncontrollably shake. But, but you still did it? Yeah, I'd do it. I'd do it. Because no one else was willing to do it. Mm. So I'd do it. But it wasn't. It wasn't easy. It never got easier, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I, re- I remember talking of shaking. I had once. I was doing a, sp- uh, a speech uh, in the assembly, and I had written it on a paper. Yeah, and it, I was shaking so much that the paper was like, and everyone could notice it, and I couldn't. I couldn't stop. Bro, I had to do uh, choir. I was. I was <laughs> Trust <laughs> that. I meant to say choir. Honestly, bro, it's t- typical me. So I Muhammad was. doing Adan, yeah. I'm doing some speech. He's the choir. But I, I went to a. Different type of school yeah, to you guys, course. complete opposite to Hoi. Well, used to I mean, I hope so. Definitely. It's turned into Nohas and left me out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to start somewhere. But if I think all of us from a young age, that's uh, an example of kind of the things that kids go through. And if you're given the opportunity now, 
um, you know, maybe you take it slightly differently, but we we all had similar experiences in that sense. Yeah, Subhanallah. The the question you asked him, you know, sometimes you'll do something, and then it will set your future for you. You'll make a decision on a certain thing, not knowing how much of an impact it's yeah. going to have on your life. Mm. Um, I don't know whether it's you know doing that done or picking a, a subject because you like the teacher or even the, the friends that you pick. You know, trying to fit in. I remember. Uh, I think I saw a video that you did about about football. It was, mm. and you were saying you 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 chose to pick Manchester United as 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 the team to to support. I'll, I'll be surprised. <laughs> no, I'm because surpri- then I'm, I'm we're too, talking uh, about the early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. I was young. Yeah, this so, was this so went back to we were the same school. age, but I I went to Liverpool and, and I don't know why I did that. Moti went to United. Bro, this started back in primary school. But she did that just to fit in. He was saying, Literally. that that was oh, the I clip see. I'm talking about. I remember, I remember this very vividly. Right, it was yeah. primary school. It was uh, playground, the playtime. Right, the only thing that activity to do was play football, and there was two teams. You're either Manchester United or you're Arsenal. Arsenal, and that's it. All right. Now deep down, I was like, you know what? I prefer Arsenal, but all the cool kids are Manchester United. So. Yeah. Manchester United is literally. I had, I, to be honest, I didn't care about football at all. But I just chose Manchester United because that was what the cool kids were doing, mm. and I just did. I did that, and then I moved from primary school. I moved on to secondary school, and it kind of stuck with me. Like, oh yeah, Manchester United, Manchester United. Deep down, I didn't care about football whatsoever. But I used to. I remember one time my brother-in-law he was like, "Oh, you support Manchester United?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Go on, name eleven players." You couldn't even name one. Sweating, <laughs> bro. Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo, <laughs> Ronaldo. I used, I remember sitting there trying to like, as if it was homework, remembering yeah. eleven players just in case I get asked, so that I don't seem like a fake fan. Yeah, bro, just, just trying to fit in. Just trying to fit in, and I like you know what? It was so it's soul destroying, bro. You're not yourself. You can't be yourself. I, th- when I you're think like that. I think generally that that kind of tendency we have or had as kids. Yeah still exists obviously because i think kids generally like that but maybe you could argue that that has 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 developed to a kind of a later age nowadays so with social media and instagram and snapchat and tiktok and all of these things kids now have an kind of an extended and a more intense desire to fulfill a need and, mm. and to fit in Very it's true. even more difficult now i feel with social media because now you have a certain image that you have to look like yeah yeah not only you know the whole filter issue uh, you know uh, but that it's the certain w- how you how you dress and how you yeah. portray that you're living this happy life mm. yeah, by the way for those you know before we started the actual recording we asked muhammad to pick one word that means something to him why did you pick empower so empower i remember reading the dictionary definition for empower and it stood out to me because empowers a word that defines what one person can have on another person. Okay. So it's not about, it's about what I can do to you. I empower you. So it's not about me giving you power. It's about you finding power within yourself. And I really what? like that concept. Yeah. The concept of me as an individual being able to influence someone to a point where they find power within themselves. Yeah. I like that. So I you really actually like as that. a catalyst basically to inspire someone. Exactly. Ah, okay. you're, a, you're a catalyst for change. You're a catalyst for growth. You're a catalyst for somebody to become different. Uh, bro, and that's, to become that's beautiful. Subhanallah. Empowerment generally yeah. as a concept is so Islamic. But mm. subhanAllah, generally it's a more humanitarian thing. Yeah, if, if people say, you know, what do we lack in the world today? Yes, we lack maybe moral, moral kind of uh, standing. We lack um, justice and... The, the true root of everything which is required in the world today is empowerment, mm. in my opinion. That's a beautiful word. I think it's going to be hard for, for, for guests to follow up and, and to match that. It depends it's on what it means word. to them, bro. Because yeah. you never know what someone could, like, someone's life could change with the words. I believe mm-hmm. that, I truly do. Like, I've read certain words where, especially in Arabic, Arabic is a beautiful language because when you go to the deeper meaning of a word, it can open up a whole different understanding of that word. For example, yeah. one of my favorite words is ruh. The word ruh means soul. Yeah. But it, the origin origin word is rih, which means wind. Wind. Wind comes and goes. It's never stable. Your soul is derived from a word that isn't stable. It's not meant to be in one place. So your soul doesn't actually belong in one place. Mm. It's meant to go and come. Now, when you understand life, 
understanding that your soul is meant to come and go it opens up a whole new dimension now yeah to the word of your to, to, to the word soul you you realize that there's no i shouldn't really be possessive over it because at some point it's going to leave it's going to leave like the wind you can't be possessive over the wind and just that so one word i true believer that one word can change your life and it's just about your perspective on that word the ch- the moment your perspective changes everything changes that's that's the journey I want to take people on. I want to change people's perspective about life. You mentioned like I like to do speeches and stuff. Yeah. It's just about changing perspective. We all grow up seeing life in a certain pair of lenses. It's, it could be the same thing. Like okay, you know what? This camera, I'm going to show it this mug, right? Now this mug, if you look at it, it probably just looks like a square right now, okay? It just looks like a square. But if I do this, all of a sudden there's a whole part of it that you didn't realize was there. I just changed your perspective. That's what I did. But if I flip it over, I'm not going to because there's water. It's going to look like a circle. <laughs> yeah. It's the same mug. Yeah. But seeing it from three different angles completely changes your perspective mm. and understanding of it. And you're going to interact with it in different ways. Life is the same. So that's why people have different opinions on certain things because they're seeing it from their own perspective. Exactly. Um, and that's why difference of opinion sometimes is, is healthy. And not sometimes, not all the time. It's healthy and it's good to have it. And sometimes I feel, you know, I, I, I said this earlier, is when you pause and you think and you ponder on things and mm. maybe put yourself in, like you, you just gave the beautiful example of, of, simple example, but a beautiful example of, of the mug and how people will see it from a different angle. Uh, someone might will say, no, this is a circle. Someone will say, no, it's a square. Someone will say, no, it's something with a handle. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's how they see things. Yeah. So sometimes when, when, when we do get into these, Debates or, or arguments or whatever it is, discussions, it's sometimes put yourself in the other person's perspective. And maybe to and understand as well that there's, sorry to interrupt, yeah. that there, there, there's more than one answer at times. Mm-hmm. Of course. So, I mean, subhanAllah. More than one right answer. As more well. than one right answer. And it comes, everyone has, like you said, a certain view on something, a certain standing. Some may have more experience or different exposure. And the fact that you know, you uh, firstly commendments to you because you know you're a young guy, uh, and, and I want to talk about your hoodie as well in a second because <laughs> we haven't even discussed that and uh, well, kind of you and your background. But the fact that you've got a certain perspective on things, and you not only you have an expect uh, a perspective, but you have a perspective to empower other people's perspectives, is a very very deep philosophy, my friend. And, and the fact that you've kind of achieved that at such a young age, and there's more to come, it's that's incredible. incredible. How did you Appreciate get into engineering? Like was that you going back again? Sorry, Hui. Hui. Was it was that? Oh, I always wanted to. Or because, for example, you mentioned some like before this show, we were talking about how some people would pick a certain career mm-hmm. or, yeah. or a degree mm-hmm. because their parents want them yeah. to. And I'm talking again, uh, the early '90s when we first came into this country. You guys probably were born '96, '95, '96, '96. So yeah. The early 90s um, for you guys were born And even even up until the 2000s The par- the Iraqi parents Or even most mo- I'd say most our communities Would say you know Doctor Or uh, pharmacist With the Iraqis Maybe with, with, with other with other communities They'd probably say you know, Engineer or, But basically it was their parents Pushing them mm. towards a certain mm. uh, Degree Yeah but so let, let me yeah. ask you, Mohammed. So you obviously work um, as an aerospace engineer, or kind of in, in work surrounding aviation. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you get into that? What, yeah. what? Where did you start? What? What age did you so kind you of get into journey. it? Yeah. Give me the journey. So, what does aerospace engineer mean? First of all. Yeah, I was, <laughs> was going to okay. say I didn't want to Aeros- <laughs> aerospace engineer means. So engineer just means, in my opinion, is somebody who can d- understand the topic to the point where they can solve problems within it. Mm-hmm. That's my definition of an engineer. Mm-hmm. So an aerospace engineer is how can I understand air mm-hmm. to the point where I can solve problems using air. Okay. Now, an aeroplane uses nothing but air to fly. But you need to understand the physics of how air works and the maths behind it to the point where you can design a wing that if it flies at a certain speed in a certain direction, will generate enough lift to make a plane fly. Yeah. Okay, so you've understood the problem and then you've chosen a specific topic to choose it. Aerospace engineering is literally the um, understanding 
of how to design an aircraft to be able to fly. You make it sound so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and so Everyone's simple at the same time. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's literally engineering for me is literally just about understanding something to the point where you can innovate and problem solve within that environment. Mm. That's all it is. If you I could, had met you twenty years ago, I would have chosen to be <laughs> You know, you know <laughs> you, <laughs> it's funny you say that because i that's not the first person who's told me that. And that's why like I've 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 dedicated a large portion of my time mm. to redefining what engineering means yeah. to our youth because we have a general problem where people think an engineer is just somebody who's a mechanic with a spanner sat under a car fixing it mohandis a mohandis <laughs> like literally mm. they think it's just a mechanic that's not what an engineer does so my journey personally for me um i used to be that kid that was just staring up at the sky looking at planes thinking how in the world is a piece of metal flying and not only flying being in full control like that's that blew my yeah. mind until this day till this day blows my mind i completely understand the physics behind it but it blows my mind i used to literally watch planes fly and i used to think how so i used to have a burning desire to understand how that led me initially to want to be a pilot i was like you know what i want to be a pilot mm. that's awesome yeah my brother-in-law sat me down he's like are you sure you want to be a pilot i'm like yeah why not he's like what is a pilot he flies from a to b stays in a hotel for a couple of hours flies back home stays in a couple of hours goes again he's basically an uber driver for the sky that definition was like, oh, I don't want to yeah. be an Uber driver. You know, okay, fine. Uh, maybe maybe a pilot isn't the right thing. I was like, fine, astronaut. Psh. I read a book by a guy called Chris Hatfield, an astronaut's guide to life on Earth. He defines exactly what it means to be an astronaut and the journey you have to take to become one. It is not easy. And you have to dedicate your, li- your yeah. life, your life to the slim chance of going up to space. Very slim chance. Because mm-hmm. there are people who train to be an astronaut all their lives and don't actually make it. So I thought, okay, if I want to make an impact in society, what do I have to do? You know what? I like maths, I like physics, and I like planes. I knew I liked three things. I like none of those except the planes part. Planes. Because of traveling. And yeah. I'm scared of flying. <laughs> you're scared of flights. <laughs> I know yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm yeah. scared of yeah. flights. Used to be, I need a lot of us. See, I, I hate maths yeah. and I hate physics. Yeah. I love it. And that's the great thing about society is we're all different. How? How do you like... like Bro, I did... Okay, <laughs> maths maybe I understand because yeah. I did it for my A-levels. Yeah. By yeah. The way. I, yeah. I, but I, physics, I don't understand how. Bro, because physics is literally, literally physics is explaining how the world works but you know around what? you. Bro, bro. The, these two subjects, yeah. everything around you, like you said, is is maths and physics. Maths and physics. But how? the thing is, I, I don't. How everything is. Maths. It's bro, how it's displayed to for me. Yeah, it's how it's displayed, how it's written, how it's explained. Mm-hmm. That rigorous thought process ruins my mind. I'm a guy I like to talk yeah. and use adjectives yeah. and talk rubbish. Yeah. Like most of all, you're you're kind of like me. We just talk and talk and talk, yeah. and uh, we I don't think we're numerical guys. No, I'm not. But um, numerical. it's a beautiful thing when you think about it. You had a video on Instagram yeah. recently about maths. Yeah, and it was what what was the titles? Um, about I I said send this send this to people who don't like maths. Yeah, yeah. I said to maths. myself. Yeah, yes. so <laughs> and you sent it to me as well. I yeah. sent it to you, as well. <laughs> you know how many people sent that video to one another, bro? Wow. It was like a hundred and that means so many people, people hate yeah. maths. <laughs> Literally, I started off the video was we all know that one kid in class who's a fight with the maths teacher. Mm. Telling her, I'll never use algebra, I'll never use maths. It's useless. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then I worked backwards. I'm like, okay, well, what is maths? Okay, maths is taking x equals plus minus this plus two minus three equals y and i tell you to find x it's just a problem yeah it's literally a problem if i hide this mug and i go go find it that's a problem that you're gonna have to solve so the, the first thing you want to gonna want to do is you're gonna try and understand the rules of the thing that surrounds it to try and solve yeah. the problem okay and then you're gonna want to solve the problem okay now let me define maths for you maths is understanding the rules that surround the particular equation to be able to manipulate it and rearrange it to find X. So it's literally the same skill that you're going to need to solve problems in your life. Mm. Just within a certain environment, within algebra. I wish they taught us maths like that at school, bro. Yeah. And that's, bro, the, what you just said is exactly what a kid told me after a talk I yeah. gave in a school. And he was like, if I had listened to what you just said earlier, I would have done maths. I would have done maths for a living. Because what you just said blew my mind and no one had explained it to me like that. And that breaks my heart. Knowing that that kid could have been the next, literally, Elon Musk. Literally, could have been the next Elon Musk because that's what engineers do. Engineers, engineer. Yeah. Elon Musk is an engineer. 
but instead he would think he was doing art at university. Mm. You know. No disrespect to art. No disrespect to, <laughs> to art. Artists, no, disrespect yeah. to art. no disrespect to art. No disrespect to Absolutely. Uber drivers as well. Please. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No disrespect to anyone. We're all living our own life, you know? Allow it. Allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop them by yeah. Uber driver. To be honest, it's, it's pilots. We should be apologizing. <laughs> we just destroyed yeah, yeah. their job yeah, title. Yeah, I don't know one pilot. He's yeah. Send me a message after. He's this. not going to like he's, me. Bro, yeah. he's going to be flying. He's not going to be sleeping yeah. in hotels. Yeah. But then, yeah, so I chose to do aerospace engineering at university. I liked, I did maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry. Allah yeah. Akbar. Wow. Allah Akbar. Speaks for itself. Yeah, and I loved further Allah maths as my favorite subject. <laughs> you, uh, Not you even know. maths, further could maths. You, further you, maths. What did you do? You done maths? Maths, further maths, physics, wow. and chemistry. Okay, I, 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 so I done maths and chemistry, same as you. Really? I done maths and chemistry. I, I did I politics, I geography, no, I like chemistry. chemistry. Yeah. I enjoyed chemistry. Yeah. That's yeah. maths. Maybe because of the teacher yeah that's yeah that's the thing though but you that's know what? your teacher can have a, a yeah. revolutionary difference. but you can be good at, like i was good at maths yeah. i got gcse's i got a good grade in maths but i i didn't understand like you said the use of it but yeah. also just the application into my own skill set mm. yeah and if, for example if i'm not going to go towards aviation and anything in a science lab or anything which involves mechanics what use am i going to have for mm. it but i think like you said the perspective on maths as a as a skill as opposed to calculations yes. is critical it's not about the algebra it yeah. never was it never was about the algebra it's about how you think about things mm. that's it so now you are doing a graduate program at so yeah Gar i finished aerospace engineering applied for well during my during my degree i worked for lufthansa technique nice so nice. lufthansa technique are a aircraft maintenance facility which specializes in the landing gear so those massive hydraulics that actually cushion you as you mm. land, mm. they used to bring them in, massive things. We used to rip them apart into individual nuts, screws, bolts, literally individual pieces, make sure everything was checked. This is about after 10, 10 years of it being in operation, it comes in for a complete strip down and then it gets checked, everything gets fixed and it gets put all the way back together again. Yeah. I did that for a year, went and finished my degree. As soon as I finished my degree, I was blessed enough to land uh, a graduate scheme program at Heathrow Airport. And I've been there ever since. So how long have you been there? Two years now. Two years. And uh, obviously, you uh, so for those that don't know, you featured in a, in a show on ITV. Yeah. So um, Heathrow, Britain's busiest airport. So on the show, I was there was two episodes. One, I was showing them on the, the runway and how we maintain our runways. And the other one, I was showing them a little invention that I made in the baggage system. Yeah. Um, something to make. Literally, if you've flown out of Terminal 2, your bag has been over that bump. For what's that? Honest, what's that? Uh, you did so the okay. topple yeah <laughs> topple thing, it's right? like a little bag amazing, baggage yeah. toppler yeah so what it is is you invented that so i i improved the design Beautiful. i didn't invent it initially but i improved the design okay nice the design was about 65 70 percent effective you'd literally watch a bag go over it and not topple and that bothered me i was like wow so just for, for the context of people who don't get it so when a bag's on the conveyor yeah. belt and they're standing up yeah. this is like a speed bump essentially exactly, exactly. meant to topple the bag so it's flat absolutely okay. if you've ever driven over a speed bump too quickly you'll know what happens in the car it's like you get jolted forward yeah yeah mm. the exact same concept applies to a bag going over a little bump on a conveyor belt you want this bag to be laying flat because otherwise it can't go through an x-ray machine every yeah. single bag that gets checked in through heathrow airport goes through an x-ray machine so you want it to go through an x-ray machine so to be able to get it flat we have this little bump and so i used um the equation for angular momentum which i learned in oh uh, yes i remember that yes, yes. Do you remember yes. Angular <laughs> Momentum? <laughs> Further math. yeah so so that's the thing is like people say oh i'll never use algebra i'll never use math i guess not so, everyone's yeah. an engineer but you know you you actually you i use the stuff i learned at uni and i'm yeah. proud of that because yeah. i learned about angular momentum i applied it to the situation so same thing i looked at the situation I understood what was going on because I understand the physics that governs this situation. Yeah. I understood that time was a crucial element within that. So I, sh I changed the time and I was able to have a different outcome. So understand it, problem solved. Simple. And I redesigned the whole thing. So I completely designed it from scratch. I took it to our internal CAD team. The CAD team turned into a diagrams and drawings. Drawings went to the workshop. They got built and then it got installed. So something that I actually drew up on paper problem is now... Solver inside the Heathrow baggage system incredible yeah. Yeah. and what about the runway how do you, how you because you know you're also involved in that how, yeah how? so the graduate scheme is is literally you get to move around okay. you get to you get to spend six months here six months there a couple months there a couple months there and you get to see the whole side of the airport nice. so i've worked everywhere from the ins inside of terminal two working on the air bridges 
the things that connect mm. the terminal to the airplane everyone's walked through them to the baggage system to the runway so when i was on the runway we have we have lights on the runway right they what tell the pilot where to come in from now every time a plane comes into land the wheels Mm. The rubber, as they as they scrape along the surface when they're landing, all that rubber melts and literally glues to the surface. Mm. Now, it's not just the tarmac that gets affected. The you can literally get a light yeah. that gets smothered to the point where dangerous you well. can't see it anymore. Yeah. You literally can't see it. Now, I spoke to a pilot. Like, well, literally, my research is I was going on a flight, knocked on the pilot's door as I was leaving. I was like, do you mind if I ask you a quick question? He's like, yeah, sure. Sat down in the cockpit. I was like, listen, I work as an engineer here. Tell me what it's like when you go to an airport that doesn't maintain its lights and he's like it's like flying a plane into a black hole Allahu Akbar no way I'm gonna die he's like literally you, it's like you uh, I could barely yeah I think there's a runway there yeah and then you go you go you go and then they're able to land it now obviously which you probably exaggerate like? I'm not gonna <laughs> tell us so we don't fly there I'm out bro Najaf Airport number one <laughs> might have to go visit those see, see what they're doing we need we need to invest in this bro yeah honestly so exactly so now yeah. a, a run a airport isn't an airport without its runway lights yeah. that is the key crucial element that keeps this whole thing operational and I so I, I demonstrated to my manager my ability to problem solve on the baggage thing and he said I've got your next problem for you I know what I need you to tackle our runway lights we need you to make sure that they're not just good we want them to be the best in Europe fix it here are all the here's, here's who you need to speak to here's the problem go fix go. it go Go. And he literally said, go. I was spending Saturday, Sunday night shifts on the runway. Literally every Saturday and Sunday, I was on the runway in a car doing testing, driving up and down, looking at individual lights. I was up in the control tower, looking down, trying to understand, okay, what does a plane affect the lights? Mm. So while I was up in the control tower, an amazing place, by the way, you're looking down at the operation and I see an A380 about to take off. Massive airplane, four engines. And as it's trying to take off, I see that the grass on either side of the runway is flapping. It's ridiculous, right? It's, it's, it's going through some, some crazy stuff because of the wind that's coming out of the engines. It's not called wind. It's called the jet blast. Now, if you think about a little stone, it gets picked up. The jet blast is 300 kilometers an hour wow. speed. If this little stone gets thrown at a lens, it gets smashed. So I thought, okay, how do we tackle it? I understand that sapphire as a as a element is stronger than glass so i've done a bit of research i figured out there's something called sapphire coated lenses they're not just normal glass they actually have a sapphire layer on top mm. of them called up the company i was like i'm heathrow airport calling from heathrow airport i'd like to run a trial with your lenses sure no problem got some delivered in the post these are sapphire coated lenses put them into the lights now i have a trial currently still there on the runway i i've, I've said it i want it to be about a year to yeah. see if these are really effective or not. So now on the runway, we've got sapphire coated lenses to see can we mitigate that damage? Because when you actually used to go and look at the lights, they were destroyed. Like, because you have plane after plane after plane after plane. Mm. Every 45 seconds, you have a plane taken off. And that 300 mile an hour gust of wind carries stones that smash into those lights and they ruin the lenses. That's a problem. Yeah. How am I going to solve it? Good thing I'm an engineer. Let me understand it first. Let me understand the parameters that are within that. And let me solve the problem. That was just one part of the runway That's stuff. It mind blowing. It also I've, included. I've never been so fast. <laughs> yeah, about, airport, our, about a runway light. But do you know what, Subhanallah? Like that's one, actually two examples of incredible thinking and just using uh, working smart and not working hard. So I think for anyone who runs a business and for anyone who kind of works in a field of management of some sort, will know that it, you know, to be to achieve goals. You need to be productive in the way you think mm. as opposed to the time you're spending and, and the quality you give to something opposed to the, t the time and, you know, the energy and the effort you're putting in sometimes can be far more important. And what you've, I think, proven, especially to, you know, I, I'm just thinking as well, while you're telling that story, like there must be so many smart people that Heathrow Airport employs, mm. people who worked in the industry for decades and decades. And then... Moti Muhammad Tahir <laughs> is smashing it. Yeah, like, comes from no Brunel, one could have thought about the Safari grad scheme. Thing. Yeah, and and you know That's the you, you know credit also to your manager for giving you the opportunity to prove yourself mm. because now you've you've done two things yeah. which can be game changing in the whole industry. You know, you you I try and add value wherever I go. That's yeah. my that's my main motto. Honestly, wherever I go, whether it's this conversation, whether it's Heathrow, whether I'm talking to 
a child who's six years old yeah just out of just randomly i bump into them and i'm just having a conversation in the supermarket yeah. trying to add value to their lives so if i can ask you maybe two or three if you don't mind Hajim, go for it very bro. quickly go for it i have maybe like i'm sure everyone who's listening has memories and experiences good and bad probably yeah. with airports what are some faqs that you can maybe or misconceptions about airports and flying and traveling which you can clarify right here and right now let me ask one actually go on i've always heard sometimes that like you, you'll get a bird flying into the one yeah the yeah entrance. bird strike bird strike what yeah. is it called a bird strike yeah do you, yeah. Do you ha- is, does that happen a lot and if it does Just happen in the movies <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and if it does, does, it, does it cause a problem so let me first tell you what we do to mitigate that right so it we does have, happen of course but the thing is here's the thing right birds are a natural thing that exists and you have planes that are trying to fly out you have flocks of birds that want to live their life. You know what I mean? They're trying to go from he A to B. simplifies everything. Honestly, <laughs> birds are natural things. Honestly. But the, the great thing is, right, you have a dedicated team on the airfield, in on the airfield at Heathrow, whose yeah. job to is do. to find where the birds are and scare them. No way. That's all they do. Scare they get they they have they have <laughs> yeah literally nice job. <laughs> they have they What's your guys job? behind the camera are like I need this yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a scarecrow yeah you just stand in there so they have they have like yeah. um, actual um, I don't think they're they're not they're not real guns but they just make loud noises right mm. I'm not sure actually if they're real guns or not table guns yeah but don't don't quote like me that. on this right but they basically they go, shoot the birds and kill them don't shoot <laughs> ah, okay. at them they shoot in the direction <laughs> just to scare them they just they yeah. do, their job is literally just to scare that's them that's a really fun job yeah so how I, do you apply so bro I applied <laughs> I, oh, applied. Okay. I applied for a role and they literally said you need to get you need to be have have the sort of clearance to be able to get a, yeah. a, a, a rifle license like that's quite cool mm. okay. you know what I mean you I'm need to start shooting at birds you need to start shooting at birds you know that's, <laughs> that's, that's the deep. nature of the job <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do but so, okay, let me tell you now from an aerospace engineering perspective, mm. when an engine is being designed, they actually get like a big chicken and fire it through a fully running engine to see what happens. Yeah. So engines are designed knowing that at some point in their life, a bird might fly through them and how do we mitigate the risk of it failing catastrophically? That's one thing. The other thing is a, a plane can fly with only one engine. It may sound crazy, but a plane, plane can fly with only one engine. So even if you do get a bird strike through one engine, the chances of it going through two are very slim. If anyone's watched Captain Sully, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, that was very rare because a bird went birds went through both engines. That's very rare. One in a million. One literally yeah. one in a million, and one in a million chance that Captain Sully was the one flying the plane. Yeah, and he was years of experience was able to save everyone on there, you know. But it's a very slim chance of that happening. Even if a bird goes through one engine, chances are it can still re- the plane can still rely on the other engine. Literally, you just, have, you just have to change a little bit of the physics in the back of the plane so that the, the, the thrust that's coming out of one engine is enough to carry it through. It'll literally do a loop in the sky, come back, land straight away. You transfer from one plane to another, and off you are on your destination. So, yes, they do happen, but the chance of it becoming a catastrophic accident, very, 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 very slim. Mm. What other misconceptions? Coming back to Ahmed's question. Go on. Gonna... But you tell uh, me. You tell I mean, us, yeah. yeah what, what, what do people say or think? Honestly... It's, it's difficult. I can't. I can't pinpoint it. Quite. I need you guys to ask. There are some questions. things I'm sure not allowed to talk about. If I was to of ask course. you, yeah, I mean, the obvious one, given our our audience, yeah. is is kind of. All right. Let me ask you from an advice perspective, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. As Muslims, mm-hmm. and as a lot of the time, sisters who wear hijab or have a certain appearance, and brothers who've got beards and mm-hmm. maybe coming back from Hajj and dresses <laughs> or whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah. Or Hadji Mustafa with his distasha. Yeah, <laughs> no, I do you know what I mean. <laughs> what advice <laughs> is? Firstly, do we need to change who we are, our, our, our identity when we enter an airport? And secondly, what advice or tips or tricks can you give us, or not just Muslims, but anyone who may be kind of at greater risk of stop or search and, and that kind of thing? So, first question: Do we need to change who, who we are? Change our identity. Change our identity. Mm, three weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, a month ago, I was on a panel discussion with the CEO of Heathrow Airport mm. about diversity and inclusion. And I started off with, I'm a Muslim. My name is Mohammed. And I'm here to make a change in the aviation industry. Mm. I love this industry and I want to make a change here. And this industry will embrace me for who I am. I'm not going to change. That resonates with people. Because you're coming as who you are. You're mm-hmm. not going to bend over backwards for who they want, want you, you to be. Yeah. I am who I am. You accept me for who I am. And that's co- going back to like who what we started this conversation with. 
of you know shifting and 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 being someone who you're not and trying to blend in. I let go of that a long time ago. Good. You become you become self conscious to the point where you understand the value yeah. you have within your own self to the point you will never want to change who you are, especially if it's only for the benefit of others. If it's for your own benefit, then change as much as you can. Change is a good thing in that sense yeah, yeah. because that's development, that's growth. But to change to match someone else's and and to shift who you are to match someone else. The reason why I'm so passionate about this subject is because I don't I when I was growing up, I was told no, don't be an aerospace engineer. No one's going to hire you. My aunts, uncles, people around me told me, "Are you crazy for doing aerospace? Nobody's going to give you a job." And my whole career, I want to prove them wrong. Now you put the mo in motivate. I said put the mo in motivate. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, bro, li- bro, I got a job at, at Lufthansa. Hello. The first interview I got, the first question I got asked in my interview, the guy screwed my 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 CV and he was like, "Are you Arab?" No way. No way. This middle-aged white guy, I walk into an interview. I'm 19 years old, and the first question he goes, "Are you Arab?" <laughs> what do you answer? Me? I was like, "Yes," and I speak Arabic. And he was like. Oh, Oh, oh well, well that can be quite beneficial Because we have partners in, in like <laughs> Dubai You know you can help us out with that Yeah I owned who I was yeah. If I had crumbled Then that conversation would have gone a very different Yeah but direction. surely from the perspective of a passenger Yeah So from a perspective of yeah. a passenger At the end of the day we're all human beings Yeah Okay As a human being There's one thing That can tell me something about you And that's the expression on your mouth If you're smiling If you're smiling That is the human way to tell somebody friendly, I'm friendly, I don't have anything. You know, I'm not trying to be... I'm not going to blow myself yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, bro, but, bro, if, you're, if you're smiling th- for three hours prior to your flight... Bro, I'm not saying smiling for <laughs> like, three hours, but if you I make eye mean. contact when yeah. you're greeting someone, if you're, if when you're, you're human, greeting yeah. somebody, yes, the yeah. human expression, when you smile, they smile back. Sure. That's how human beings work. You have to remember, these people don't come to work expecting to be racist. Yeah. Yeah? And especially with Heathrow, most people are Asian. Like the work yeah, there, yeah. especially like in the in the, the workforce, you yeah. have a massive population of, of ethnic minorities who work in the workforce. So the chances are the guy who's standing next to them is Sikh, Muslim, Hin- Hindu, and they they they've yeah. embraced this culture anyway. Diverse, so you don't yeah. really need to change who you are. I don't know what happens outside the outside world. I'm sure there are people who stereotype. I'm not gonna say every single person is uh, you know, Diversity and inclusion, yeah, hundred percent. No, of course there's going to be people who aren't. Yeah. But the point is, if you crumble, then you're just feeding their thoughts and what they already had in their mind. So every opportunity you have, try and break that stereotype. Being Smile who you are, yes. and, and not bending backwards, but at the same time remembering your human side should show. Absolutely. First, that's the first thing you show. I'm a human being. Yeah. Before, before I'm Muslim, I'm a human being. Mm. Before my name is Muhammad, I was a human being. Before anything, I was a human being. At the end of the day, it's a human-to-human interaction. And that goes far beyond just the matter of racism and profiling. That goes into when you're in an interview. If I'm at an interview, the first question I usually ask is, what did you do this weekend? Or if it's a Friday, you got anything planned for the weekend? Yeah. Why? Forget work. You're a human being. You got a family? You're going to spend time with the kids? You get that side out first. Absolutely. Make them feel comfortable as well. When you, when you... you just want to make them feel human. Mm. Because when you make them feel human, they can relax and trust you. Yeah. It's just about being a human being. And the, the human element, like the human skill, is such an important skill to develop. Because the moment you develop your human abilities and your ability to communicate, your ability to articulate yourself, mm. your ability to listen to people, that opens up doors in your life. That being good at maths could have never opened. Yes, I'm good at maths, but I'm much better at people skills than maths. Mm. And people skills have got me much further than maths has. Because I work hard in developing my people skills because I understand the impact they will have on my life. That's my personal opinion. That's a good question you asked, Ahmed. Good answer. (laughs) How do you smuggle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do you that's, smuggle that's the <laughs> Shisha to my coin? This is why I didn't want to ask. I wanted person. you to tell me. <laughs> Duty not, free. I do not know. Is there a way that when it goes through that bag system that you created, you pull the bag out and then Good give, it, give it, it to me in the exit? Good luck, mate. <laughs> no way, no way. You can help us out with that. Heathrow security. I've never seen security like it. Is it really bad? Really it's good. They got. They got oh, I'm. 
really bad as in it's really good. It's really good. It's, it's bad for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Trust my <laughs> master. Trust my master. You know, but it's from from a safety perspective, health and safety yeah. is literally within the bloodstream of Heathrow. That's mm. the first thing. When you start a meeting, the first thing you mention is health and safety. Literally, the first thing you mention is health and safety. Have I had any incidents today? What's going on from a safety perspective? Because at the end of the day, everyone comes to work just to, for work. They have yeah. a life outside of work. Yeah. No one wants to come to work, get an arm severed off, and go <laughs> back without an arm. No one wants to come to work, lose their life, and go back. And the thing is, when you have an operation like Heathrow is, mm. where you have stuff moving, heavy machinery, in and out, you have cars full of tons, weighing tons, you have fuel being filled up, any little problem that happens. Because All it, traffic. Exactly. Safety is the most important. So during COVID, by the way, Heathrow never closed. No, never. stayed open. We we have terminals that closed. Well, not well. Technically, I can't say closed. They were airlines were shifted to another terminal mm. because remember, at the end of the day, Heathrow is a business. Yeah, they need to make money. So from from your perspective as an engineer, yeah, does your work get busier or quieter? Are you adapting more to COVID in your role, mm-hmm. or are you quieter because there's less demand? And My so current role. To be honest with you, it hasn't really had much of an effect. But yeah. as an engineering function, our difficulty is being able to access our our stuff to be able to fix them and maintain them. The fact that there's no passengers in the building anymore is a great opportunity to maintain stuff and to look after it, make sure it's doing well, health checks, etc. Yeah. So you've got Terminal 4 and Terminal 3 at the moment that are empty. That's a massive opportunity to do work, improvement works. They're empty as in what? There's no, there's f- no passengers, there's no flights. Terminal three and four. Three and four. All flights have been redirected to Terminal 5 and Terminal 2. It's common knowledge. I mean, you can find out on Google, so I can say it. Yeah. You know, but all, you know, that's that's what's happening at the moment because it's a building. I mean, and it costs money to run. So it's, you know, you, if you can minimize how many buildings you need to keep open and running, you save some money. It's a business. So for those who don't know, slightly off topic. Yeah. Um, you are quite big on Instagram. You no, run a page. No, I'm not big on Instagram, no, bro. You're, you're on. active. Ah, I need to rethink oh, yeah. how I word this. Really active. Big. Say yeah. that again. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously you've you, you've created a page called Mo T8, which I very much like. Yeah. I'm very smart. Um, firstly, what is the inspiration behind it? Because obviously the people you're appealing to are not all working in the aviation mm. industry. Mm. So, as myself as a follower, what would you hope I gain from following your page? I hope you would gain an understanding that your potential within your own self isn't limited to who you think you are and who you are currently. Mm. That your dreams and the things that you've always aspired to achieve, no matter how out of reach they may seem, are within reach. And I want to do that by sharing my own story. Yeah, I was I, I am just a normal guy, but I have a dream. That's it. You know, I, I genuinely have a vision. I have a direction of where I want to take my life. And I wa- I am willing to work hard to achieve it. That's all. And I want to show people that if you have that same attitude, no matter who you are, no matter where you started off from, we spoke about where I started, mm. you can achieve that. So go for cool. whatever your dreams are. They're possible. Yeah. But it's going to require sacrifice. You know, I pulled in here today with my mom's car. Mm. You know, I used to have a car just like this. But I sold it. Literally, I Good choice. Have, I sold it. <laughs> bro, they, they, they drink petrol, by the way. Oh, the my God, madness. bro. I've filled up a full tank today. Literally. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, yeah. I'm willing to make financial sacrifices. I'm willing to make lifestyle sacrifices. I'm willing to make time sacrifices. Mm. Because I have a dream. I have yeah. ambitions. And I'm willing to put stuff at risk for that. And if you're willing to do that, the whole world is your oyster. That's what I hope people to get from this page. Obviously, an understanding behind the scenes of the airport is cool. Yeah. But yeah. for somebody who's not really into the airport scene, what can you gain from that? I hope for you to see like the, what I'm doing and say, if he can do it, why can't I? Talking about if, if he can do it, why? If someone's now about to go into university, mm-hmm. was thinking about a career, and he's seen this podcast interview, and he's thought, you know what, I want to get into aerospace engineering. Yeah. What advice do you have for them? What do they need to do at A-levels maybe? Yep. What do they need to do at university? Yeah. Does it have to be maths, further maths, physics and chemistry? Mm-hmm. You know, What's the route to take yep. to get into this same field that you're in? So there are many different routes that you can take. 
I mean, the graduates came at Heathrow, literally they took on a biochemist, somebody who saw biochemistry, somebody who studied all random stuff. But okay, if you wanted to take the, the, the most, the, the major route in, I would say if number one, if you're interested in the aviation industry and you see yourself there long term, if you want to go down the engineering route, you can either go for an, an aerospace engineering degree like I did. Now, if you want to do an aerospace engineering degree, you will need the maths and physics. It's not easy. Mm. I think aerospace engineering is one of the most difficult degrees you can choose mm. up there with medicine and the likes of medicine. If I showed you some of the stuff I had to learn in my final year. Angular, what was it? But Angular <laughs> momentum was in like the <laughs> first year, bro. That was easy stuff, man. <laughs> we were doing aerothermodynamics by the oh, end. Oh, wow. SubhanAllah. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Surely and the guy didn't give us a, a formula sheet. You had to remember everything. Wow. But surely that, bro, honestly, surely that strengthens your your belief in God. And and the honestly, and the work you're doing, and even the smallest things like, you know, the one in a million chance that a bird will fly into mm. everything you see around you and yeah. the, that clunk of metal in the sky stays up, like you say. Yeah. Does that affect your, your faith and, and strengthen your belief? And understanding the world around you definitely does. Hmm. Being able to to see how complex the world is, yet yeah, it we take it so for granted. So granted. So granted. We just we literally glaze past it. Yeah. Like you hear the noise of a plane going over your head. At not one point do you think this chunk of metal is using physics and maths to manipulate air to create a force on the wings to fly. Mm. And somebody understood air enough to be able to do that. And the fact is, birds do the same thing. And mm. birds jump out the nest and just, and just go. Mm. They don't even think about it. They just go. But somebody saw a bird and thought, how? Like, I, if I was at the time where the Wright brothers were there, I would have probably been one of the Wright brothers because flying for me is I want to fly. My, my dream is to, I want to do skydiving. I wanna, there's a, there's you haven't done skydiving yet? Not yet, bro, but trust you me. Have to do skydiving. I don't want to do skydiving connected to somebody. That's the problem with me. What do you mean connected? I was going to do oh, it. By I don't want to do, oh, do tandem. You don't want to do tandem. I don't want to do tandem. I want to do but on my own. Yes. Without a parachute. Abs- no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, with a parachute. But I wanted to, there's a company called, also called Gravity, which yeah. do jetpacks. Jetpacks, yeah. Now, I bang on about them all day, every day, because I want to do that. That's, that's me madness Bef- i sold my car i bought something called an electric unicycle now imagine one wheel which you stand on either side of mm, i've seen them. you lean forward and you're go you go you fly off oh, you're Drop off straight on my face <laughs> right. no, i did that a few times but oh, I, I told myself i'll learn and i kept going chemistry uh, physics, physics 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 all about physics but the thing is that the reason why i chose that you a, a unicycle is because the sensation while you're on it, yeah. all you do is you think and you go. You feel like you're flying. You genuinely feel like you're flying. I love flying, whether it's myself or the plane. I just love the, th- the thought of being able to think about going somewhere and just going. That's cool to me. Do you travel a lot, by the way? I do, yeah. Okay. I like traveling. Do you get a discount when you travel? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I need to work for an uh, airline for uh, that. Yeah, that's smart. I was going to change my name to Muhammad Dara. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Find my way into Heathrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wish. I wish. But I, I do enjoy traveling. I like getting different perspectives. Mm. That's again. I went. So you, you're definitely advising people that are thinking about anything to do with, I don't know, aerospace or thinking about engineering to go into this field. Mm. Or well, no. How's the money? Someone's gonna say, how, "Do you get paid well?" Or Depend- can you depends get, on how yeah. much effort you put in. Yeah. With everything, mm. everything in life is depending on how much effort you put in, and how much effort you put in depends on how passionate you are yeah. about the subject. You're very passionate. If you're passionate about something, you go far. If you're not passionate about something, you won't go far. So yeah. Remember the curve we were talking about, the progression curve. Yeah. You want to develop. Yeah. Well, you join a career you're not really passionate about. That curve is gonna be like this kind of passionate about it we'll go there if you're very passionate about something the sky's the limit and the fact is you'll probably reach a ceiling there and figure out you're really passionate about something else i want to go do that after that straight away covid wave two i know will be i don't want to be an engineer forever i want to be a motivational speaker Mm. at some point really that's my passion i was just about to ask you because your energy is infectious subhanallah and i think anyone who's so far tuning in will be able to tell that you've got not Everyone's only... going to become an aerospace engineer. Honestly, <laughs> I'm thinking, why do I work in the field I do? <laughs> no, but honestly, so anyone who's watching so far will probably articulate that you are a 
uh, very quick thinking, very sharp. You'll be able to spot a problem and solve it, which is an incredible skill. And I think, you know, I wish I had that as well. Um, it's a skill, bro. You can gain it. Yeah, work hard and, and it will get there. The second thing is, of course, like you, like I said, your your energy, your expression is uh, incredible. It's really, really good. Um, despite being surrounded by scarecrows all day. <laughs> and, and that I don't want to know what you need to get that job. Yeah, Being a scarecrow. That would, <laughs> least, honestly, what'd you put on your CV? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask, in the next 20 years or so, mm-hmm. by the time you reach your mid-40s, mm-hmm. What legacy would you have liked to have left mm-hmm. between now and then? Mm-hmm. And who do you want to be? Who? Where is Muhammad Tahir 20 years from now? 20 years from now? Mm. I want to... I want to be in a point where maybe somebody would approach me in public that I've never met and would tell me that because of something you said, my life took a turn for the better. Like, I hope to have that impact with the words that I say. Because we all have an option and a choice of what words we we choose to transmit into the universe. And I hope that the words that I can choose, I can be guided by Allah enough to be able to guide people to their genuine journey and what they're, they're, they're there on the earth to do. Like, I want to really be able to have an impact on people's lives. At the moment, I have I have, like, you know, 14, 15 year olds who message me on Instagram and they say, I'm so glad I followed you because that one thing you said is taking me down a different route to where I was. That 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 is the reason why I do it. I want to be able to help people. I want to hopefully people say that I gave more than I took and that I was able to just help people. That's all I want to do. That's beautiful. I hope I hope you get to that Inshallah. before 20 years. Shab- and I can Shab- see that Allah. happening. And it's incredible how your aspiration is to achieve an experience as opposed to being in a certain place. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, for example, if someone was to ask a person, where would you want to be? Oh, I want to be in X position, earning X amount, doing X things day yeah. to day. But your aspiration is to have achieved or, or found yourself to a place where you have recognized the fact that you make an impact to someone. Do you know there's a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where he says that the best of people are those well, someone asks him to, from the beginning, what is Islam? And the Holy Prophet says, Islam is to worship God and to be of benefit to those around them. And the best of people are those who are most beneficial to those around him. Mm. Now, what you're doing day to day is one thing. But what you choose, what you're currently choosing to do outside of work is to use your skills, your abilities and the blessings Allah has given you Absolutely. and to inspire others. And I think anyone who's watching, regardless really what field they're in, yeah. can take a lesson from this because Absolutely. you are an example of a guy like my, myself and Mustafa who've been born and brought up in this country and who've just gone down you know, the, the normal traditional educational system into uni, then into a grad job or something like that. But you've taken something from what you're doing and you're applying it now to benefiting thousands of people around you. And that's a really, you know, you should be credited for that. And I hope you feel really proud of, of what you got to so far. It's not me, bro. Honestly, like, and I say it with my, from the bottom of my heart, it's not me, bro. Like I, I sometimes I, I, people say, oh, how, like, what did you do? How did you do it? Bro, I, the prayers of my parents are what got me here. Mm. This guy is single. <laughs> May Allah bless your parents Bro honestly And I mean this from my yeah, heart Allah. The prayers of my grandparents beautiful. And my parents Are what got me here Alhamdulillah yeah. bro That's beautiful N- None of this is like, And, I, and I, I, I am a firm believer That you you put your faith In Allah first You put your faith In Allah first And then you put the hard work You let him steer your ship You trust him enough To steer your ship You do the groundwork You concentrate on the here and now Let him do the rest That's it and I, and I genuinely believe that everything I've achieved in my life so far is just a, a blessing from Allah. And I mean that. I honestly mean that. Because I, I don't feel like I don't feel like I've achieved all of it. I know I've put in the hard work, but I know other people have put in the hard work and they haven't achieved it. So why me? Because I have faith in Allah, bro. Like and I, and these dreams and aspirations that I have, first of all, if, if this is if, if that's gonna take me away from Allah, then don't give it to me. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Like if, if that is if that moment where somebody approaches me and say, Thank you so much for helping me, blah 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 is gonna give me a self a sense of like, oh I feel so arrogance good about myself or arrogance, I don't want it to happen. I don't yeah. want it to happen. 
there's a there's in in dua makaram al akhlaq my favorite part of dua makaram al akhlaq it says ya allah do not raise me in the eyes of people a single degree unless you lower me within myself the same amount subhanallah so don't ever let anybody think more of me unless i think less of myself in the exact same amount in balance yeah, yeah. Dua makaram al akhlaq for anybody, 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 just listen to Dua makaram al akhlaq. Dua makaram al akhlaq is the epitome of self development. And I mean that. If you want to develop yourself, if you want to grow into somebody who's more than who you are, listen to Dua makaram al akhlaq. Internalize its lessons. Take on board what it has to say. Mean it. Like genuinely mean it. Talk to Allah through Dua makaram al akhlaq. It is such a beautiful dua. Mm. My uncle once told me that. MashaAllah, he's very successful. Okay. He told me, Muhammad, every morning read Dua Makaram al Akhlaq. I remember asking him for a secret. He's like, every morning read Dua Makaram al Akhlaq. I was like, why? He's like, just read it and you'll understand. You read it within the first couple of sentences, that verse comes up and you get it. Mm. You think, okay, I get it. Because if you want to be successful, humility, if, I, if success means losing my humility, don't give it to me, Ya Allah, please. Mm. Just take me now. You know, I'd rather, live, I'd rather live in a micro for the rest of my life. Yeah. If, 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 and remain humble than be in a Porsche. And think a lot of myself and be arrogant and and not give people the time of day. No matter what car I'm driving, if someone knocks on the window and says, "Yo, I have a question. Do you yeah. mind helping me?" I want to be in a position where I switch off the car. Yo, talk to me. What do you want? Let's help. Let me help you. You know, there's a guy called Gary V online. I'm not sure yeah. if any of you know him, right? Yeah. But he does he does this stuff as well. Yeah. I, he's aspirational, man. This guy sits there replying to DMs for hours <laughs> of people crazy. asking. Yeah. Gary V is massive as he's well. Massive. Yeah. massive. But he will reply to everybody and give them value and add value to their lives. I find that inspirational. If Allah, if Allah has given you a, the gift of the gab or the gift of being able to think about th- certain things in a certain way and articulate that and you recognize that he's given you that gift, not doing that is doing the world an injustice. Mm. Because you could change people's life if you're choosing not to. Beautiful. I've recognized that I may have some sort of potential in me to do that and I don't do it then I'm I'm not fulfilling Allah's purpose for me. Yeah. Allah's put me here for a reason and I want to achieve that reason. And all, air, being an aerospace engineer as nice as it is and interesting as it is it's not Allah's purpose. That's not why God's put me here. God's put me here for people for, to yeah. change people's lives. Everyone's got a purpose coming back to what we said at the start. You said, yeah, 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 said that in the start. You said that in the start. And it yeah. really, really do, yeah, bro. And and for me, it's... <clears throat> for me, my purpose is to make people look inside and look for your purpose. Beautiful. I want you to think back mm. and think, okay, what has, Allah ta- what has Allah given me that I'm talented at? Ask yourself three questions. What am I genuinely talented at, just by nature? What do I enjoy? And what from those two things would also make me a living that I could survive off? Mm. The moment, it's like a Venn diagram, right? It's like circles that overlap. Yeah. The moment something is something you enjoy, something that you're good at, you're genuinely naturally talented at, and it can make you money to survive, that sweet spot, the passion and the talent are what is going to make the money element you don't have to worry about anymore. But the fact is now you've got something that you both enjoy and you're passionate about, the rest of your life is sorted. Just yeah. go for it. Just just pour your heart and soul into it. Why are you spending your time in a nine to five just doing something you're, you're miserable about? That's not going to fulfill your purpose. That's not going to fulfill your passion. Follow your dreams, man. There's no point of life if you're not going to do that. No point. And I, 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 and I hope to be. I hope to be somebody who people can look at yeah. and say, "Well, if he's doing it, why can't I?" Because honestly, bro, the, the way my journey started, I was fat. I was insecure. I had literally no confidence in myself at people? all. It's not. There's no. There's no. Re- there's no problem. <laughs> micros. You know what? I feel like I've. I've yeah. I've, what's wrong with I've micro gone, drivers? I've gone down. I'm I've gone down yeah. a people. Oh, else? Gosh. My Someone's bad. driving a push right now. Why, why is he bringing? Why is he bringing? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what? Why push? You're right. You're right. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't. No, be I'm joking. Bro, like, I'm joking. I'm joking. But honestly, honestly, shout out to Mushtaba Husseini for recommending you for this podcast. Bro, honestly. If if I started my journey on such a like low like and at just at, you know within a, within a couple of years of investing in myself, I, whatever whatever you define as success, okay, has happened, then yeah. anybody can do it. Yeah. And honestly, this I say define as success is because 
compared to the the most successful people, they're probably thinking, choose this guy. But what's the, well, how do you define success? It's up to you. Yeah, I say it's up to you. you. It's, it's what so it's literally in your heart, yeah. and that's something that's scary, bro. Because because you decide your level of success, all that has to happen is you shift that that bar, that bar to the end, all right, yeah. and then you're never gonna be happy. Because or like, you reach it something to something that yeah. is really yeah. achievable, yeah. and yeah. then all of a sudden so you've achieved it. Like, is that it? So, so I'll give you a very good example of this. While after I gave a talk at um, London Metropolitan University, yeah. there was a girl who came to came up to me and she's like to me, Muhammad, I had a dream of being an air hostess. That was my goal. That was all I wanted to do. And I did it. And it wasn't what I expected. And it's not. I, that's, I can't, I've been doing it for five years and I don't really like it. I'm like, that, well, why do you make your dream something so achievable? Yeah. Mm. My dream is to sell out Wembley Stadium. I grew up around it. That's my dream. I'm going to put it out of reach because I need to stretch. Yeah. Put your dreams out of reach. Okay. But don't let them be materialistic things. Things that are are just like, oh, I want to make this much money in my bank account. Yeah, that's not. Who's that going to benefit, man? Tough. Make it something a little bit more to your core. Make it something a little bit more you. Again, because money in the bank account, you're probably thinking, oh, other people are going to know that I've made a milli and they're going to be like, oh, sick. The moment you stop caring about what other people think, ask yourself what you really care about. Sad. Beautifully said. Make that your goal. Uh, so I do come to the end of this session. Peak. But we'll definitely have you again, I think. <laughs> there's so much, I think. There's a lot of questions we wanted to ask I think you. Um, I mean, this is my debut as well. Kind of as Sorry, I was saying. Sorry, you talk enough. No, 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 bro. I'm, 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 I, I want... I'm going to be a questions. regular, by the way. So okay, okay, okay. Inshallah. Awesome. So, but I mean, for me to make my debut with you, mm. and obviously we've known each other for a few years, and for me to see the growth you've had, mm. and kind of what you're doing, bro, may Allah keep blessing you. Inshallah. Please. And Inshallah. you know, for whoever's watching, I ask anyone who's watching to keep you, and all of us, Inshallah, in their prayers. Please. But and, um, and Muhammad Tahir's family as well. Inshallah, yeah. Inshallah, please, family. Yeah. <laughs> because they, he, it's with their du'as that he's reached where. Yeah. He's. That's bro, yeah. that's reach that's where we reach, bro. It's like, but keep doing. I'm what still you're doing, nothing, man. like you know what I mean. No matter what you achieve, I, I inshallah, more and more, bro. Only Allah's got me here. Allah. Allah will keep keep pushing me. If Allah, if Allah, if it's good for me, Allah will make it happen. That's what I've I'm got. Like. I've got a light hearted Go for it. Fire round. Go on. Are you guys right. ready? Let's let's move. Let's, let's cheer it up a bit. Yeah. It's only a few questions. All right, you, but you got to quickly answer. No thinking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think you're going to be good at this. So how how are we doing this? I'm going to ask Does him. He I'll ask you. Okay. I've got different okay. questions for each one. Oh really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's see. They're light hearts. <coughs> okay. Don't ask him to name Man United players. <laughs> 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 if you could be any animal, what would you be? A bird. No, that was easy. I should have known that. Okay, but <laughs> I didn't. On, I, I made these Come questions on. before. Yeah. yeah. Before this interview. Okay. Who's your favorite superhero? Iron Man. Fly. Come on, bro. I bro, think you're gonna shoot Superman, bro. No, bro. Iron Man, man. Is it? I, Cause you know why? It's Iron Man of gravity. Engineering, bro, it's bro. Oh, it's because of because yeah. of gravity, bro. Once you look at gravity's Instagram page, you're gonna understand why. Yeah. Because it's achievable. I feel like I can actually become Iron Man one day and literally fly. Yes. Favorite city you visited? Uh, I thought about this now. Vietnam, uh, Ho Chi Minh. I really enjoyed that one. Very interesting. Okay. Your favorite city that you haven't visited yet? How would you be able to answer? That? Or a, a favorite des- or a destination? A dream that you destination. Want to visit. A dream destination. I think I've ticked off. I've ticked off everything. So I need to think about the last one. Oh, there's trouble then, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. I really wanted to go to San Francisco this year and it got cancelled. So I'm kind of annoyed about that. COVID cancelled the flight. Who do you admire the most? Abu al-Fadl Abbas What is your favourite hobby? Reading Describe yourself in three words <clears throat> Passionate Passionate and passionate Beautiful Last question If a movie was made of your <coughs> life What genre would it be? Inspirational Easy answer That was nice Ahmed, you've got, I've got a question. The, the first, go. sorry, can I just say, what film comes to your mind when he says that? Inspirational. 
like for me it's pursuit of happiness style <laughs> yeah you know what pursuit i mean of those happiness, ones. Yeah. ar's there he's, he's, yeah yeah okay yeah, ahmed sure. ahmed no thinking yeah how, yeah how much too long with that took too long bro where is the worst place you could get stuck customs <laughs> <laughs> What is your biggest addiction? Uh, Netflix. <laughs> Who's your favorite cartoon character? SpongeBob. <laughs> Peppa Pig. Uh, where am I? Uh, how many books have you read so far this year? Oof. Um, not more than four or five. Okay, quite. A not great. Yeah, not great. Recommend, recommend right. a book for our listeners to read too. Um. There's one I was, I've yeah, got in mind. There's one called Shitty Political Thought, but that's kind of like something I'm interested by a guy called Ahmed Vaizi. Yeah, own it, bro. Which is yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Can I answer this one as well? Yeah, go for it, please. Yeah, of course. How to win friends and influence people. I've, yeah, Dale Carnegie, right? Dale Carnegie. Have you read I, that? Yeah, I have. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I had the audio book. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, but I found it semi-repetitive towards the end, bro. Like, from when it was, I can't do audio books. I, that's the only well, la, it's the only audio book I've heard in my life. Oh, okay, and I was okay, on a four-hour drive so, yeah, to Manchester. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what is the thing you're most most afraid of? Uh, failure. And finally, describe yourself in three words. Um, so that's, uh, a tough, that's a tough one. Self-critical, yeah. I'd say. Self-critical, if that's one. <laughs> well. One adjective, <laughs> um, uh, loyal, and passionate. Passionate is the only thing that's coming oh, yeah. to my mind. <laughs> that's the only oh, thing I can think about because he said passionate. I can't get passionate, out of my mind. <laughs> well, guys, I don't know. it's been a pleasure. Ahmed, inshallah, obviously, we're going to see you. Inshallah. More. Ahmed, inshallah, we'll have you for a part two, definitely, as well. Uh, I want to wish you the best from Thank the progeny so team. Uh, also, shout out to all the behind uh, the scenes. Just behind before the we scenes. end, where, where, can, where can we find you if, so, if anyone wants to catch you? Most duty of, free. <laughs> duty free, yeah, literally. Heathrow Airport, mate. Hit me up. Um, motivate on Instagram. So, okay, M-O so underscore T underscore I V A T E. So, it's just motivate with two underscores in it. I should have thought about that branding more. It doesn't it doesn't no, blow off. You fine. know what I was thinking? Because obviously we know you as Mo T. Mo T is my nickname, yeah. So yeah. we should Mo T and then V A T. Yeah, it Mo is T what it is. Bait. But it's Mo the T word motivated. Bait. Yeah. Follow Muhammad on Instagram. Obviously, if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram Progeny Podcast. Subscribe to our channel, and inshallah, we'll see you soon. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.